07 and welcome aboard. Today I want to talk about Star Citizen versus Elite Dangerous. I get asked a lot in my stream and I've been wanting to make a video about it for a while now. Which is better? Star Citizen? Elite Dangerous? I've spent the better part of a year streaming Elite Dangerous at this point, almost exclusively, and now I've shifted over to more Star Citizen content. I still play Elite Dangerous, and given the differences between the two games, there's a lot to discuss here. Up front, I want to make it clear that I'm not treating it like X is definitely better than Y and should only play one and not the other. While both games are space sandbox sims, they both have very different strengths and weaknesses, and we're going to discuss those aspects. Additionally, as most of us know, Star Citizen is still in alpha. They're in the process of adding features into the game and is constantly changing and taking shape, so bear that in mind. I'm going to try and refrain from talking about what Star Citizen has planned for the future and talk about what's in the game right now. Eh, it's going to be tough. Anyways, at its heart, the difference between these two games are a matter of scale and depth. Elite Dangerous has something like 400 billion stars to go explore. As of 3.8x for Star Citizen, it's got one. I mean, they're absolutely going to add some more, and I said I wouldn't talk about the future, but I think it's kind of important. They'll never get close to the amount of locations Elite Dangerous has, though. It's got the entire galaxy that we're in. That being said, Star Citizen has way more interesting and interactive things to do in a single system. There is a reason people are still cruising around Stanton, exploring, touring, walking the cities, and there's so much more detail in Star Citizen that Elite Dangerous just wasn't built for. If you like exploring uncharted star systems and getting your name tagged as the discoverer, Elite Dangerous has a lot to offer. If you want to immerse yourself in a cyberpunk city, pirate infested asteroid base, or just explore the halls of your ship, well, Star Citizen has you there. This brings me to scale. Another commander, a very wise man, once told me, Elite Dangerous is an ankle-deep wading pool that is impossibly massive, while Star Citizen is a puddle that's extra super incredibly deep. Not as big, but a lot going on underneath. So let's get into specific aspects of the game. Like traveling. Since space is vast, very, very vast, extremely vast, I wanted to talk about how getting around differs between the two games. Starting out in Star Citizen, most of your traveling from place to place involves quantum drives. So instead of jumping from system to system like in Elite Dangerous, you pick a destination, you start flying towards it. This is very similar to Super Cruise in ED. Multiplayer. This is a big one for me. I play and stream these games to play with friends and interact with community, and they both have fantastic communities filled with passionate players. Multiplayer in Elite Dangerous by and large limits your group size to four players in independent ships. Though, of course, there's ways around that, as well as a multi-crew system that has a few problems. Things like wing mining in Elite Dangerous are fantastic, and going Thargoid hunting or bounty hunting is a great way to have some fun with friends. Conversely, in Star Citizen, because each player is a person and not a ship, you have a lot of flexibility in how you interact with other players. Either flying together on one ship, manning a turret, flying escort for a fleet. The group sizes are much larger as well, so that's a really big advantage. The ships. I mean, this is a space game, so we got to talk about the ships. We have to talk about the ships. Star Citizen has a lot more ships already available, many more in the works. But the real interesting thing is the approach the two games took. Star Citizen ships are pretty much purpose-built. You can fine-tune and customize the components on your ship, but at the end of the day, you're not going to be taking a prospector and trying to go dogfighting. Well, I mean, you probably shouldn't. On the other hand, Elite Dangerous lets you configure virtually everything your ship does. While there may be some that have better synergies and are better at doing things than others, there's nothing stopping you from taking your Imperial Courier and turning it into a cargo ship or miner if you really want to. Economy. Elite Dangerous' background simulation, or BGS, is much more robust than Star Citizen's right now. Which is, you know, taking its first steps. While you can do space trucking in either game, the depth and breadth of your options in ED are much higher. Where the goal requires moving freight, in the case of Operation Ida, to repair damaged stations, or with the truckers, moving freight long distances is the goal itself. You can make money in both games hauling goods, and really, that's enough for a lot of people. Also, let's take a look at sandboxiness. I don't really have a better word for that. 
I thought about making the next point the immersion levels in the two games, but realized that's really subjective, so sandboxiness. Basically, with sandboxiness, it's the freedom to set goals for yourself or your group and what you can do within the limits of the game itself. Here again, there's a lot of differences. In Elite Dangerous, we've hosted many community flight nights, including something like a dolphin demolition derby or pod racing. It was a lot of fun. No real benefits in the game, just getting together with some people and having fun. Star Citizen has a lot to offer here as well. We've already set up some ground races in game using various vehicles on different surfaces like ice and low G and rocky terrain. In ED, you're pretty much limited to like interactions in your ship or SRV. You can group up, go sightseeing, then head to the bar afterwards in Grim Hex and maybe hang out, chat with people, get into a fist fight or two. It happens. At the end of the day, this all comes down to what you find fun. I really enjoy aspects of FPS content in addition to blowing ships up, but that may not matter to you at all if you haven't spent time in one or the other or either of these two great games. So what's best for you? What do you have fun doing in these types of games? Feel free to share what your experience has been like. Any questions or things I missed? Leave a comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe or catch me live on Twitch. Anyways, fly safe in the meantime, and don't forget to raise your landing gear. What? What? No! <laughs> All powered engines, go, go, go! Ah.